What's up everyone, my name is Nigark. Welcome back to Firewatch. As you can see, as I mentioned, this is the Steam version of the game, so my save isn't here. What I thought I was going to do is I thought I was going to play up to the point that I was at previously and then continue from there. But I was told that there's a new intro to the game, and I'm actually really curious about that, and I want to make sure that we don't miss out on that for all of you. So I'm going to try to show that off. Um, yeah. That's definitely a new one. Last time I just came out of bushes. In cooperation with Panic Incorporated. Nice. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. Oh, it's where we met. Oh, it's the bar where we met. You see, Julia. No. No. Aw, oh, they're setting us up for the sadness. Do I have to... Oh. I had to click. She was about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. I approach her. You're drunk. So, what's your, you know, major? You're, you're pretty. Uh, so what's your major? You slur the words, the word major and it smells like coors. You give an awkward smile. Uh, smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? Was that a burn, you ask? She says, definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Well, that was... that was fast. We're going steady now. Oh my goodness. No, it's setting us up for the super sadness. Oh, please. I get my backpack. Oh, this is us leaving Julia. No! 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 Oh man, really? Hold on. Hold on. Okay, maybe I actually... Okay. Sorry, I'm one of those people. If I could- if I wasn't wasting so much time while recording, I would get... all the way up there. No! You date for over a year, she drives you absolutely nuts, it's great. You move in, you share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck, you drink beer just about anywhere, life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy undersized beagle. Julia is in love, she wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog, it's badass. Uh, Beagle, I named him Bucket. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him, too. No! 1979, you talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30pm, and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart, or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots. Uh, that would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. No! 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 No, Julie! Julie! Oh, man. Why did it have to start like this? I almost wish I skipped this intro. Do not forget to check in. No fireworks. Warning, thoroughfare, tr thoroughfare trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. It's a primitive backcountry trail. Uh, you're in their country. Learn to live with bears. And there's a map. Which hopefully... Oh, I haven't been, I haven't been given a map yet. Oh man, this sucks. Oh my god. 1980. It's a Thursday night, and Julie is four hours late. Or Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call you, worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Uh, you ignore her. 
You don't touch each other all night. The next day, you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. Uh, you pose and flex like He-Man. You look awesome. Oh my god, they are setting it up to be so sad. Oh my god, they are setting it up to be so sad. Two forks, eight miles. Eight more miles still. Spacebar to climb over garbage. Yep, I can do that. Wow, look at that. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from far away places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. But but wait. But bit bop. Fuck. D -d Dog. Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. Beat his goddamn face in. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. Uh, why can't we... Why can't we move? Uh, agree, I guess? You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if, what, if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Oh my god. 1985, Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. Oh no, she lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember, she just- she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. Maybe we should talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. No! Ah, oh, my journal. It's all I can- I can't even move. Oh. Um. It's her journal. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because she gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children are idiots. Little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. Oh, man. Uh, you take care of her yourself. No, Julia. Julia. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna come this way. Cross over this little. Oh, hi. Hi, buddy. Just gonna. Gonna go down there. Okay. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes back, when she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the ch drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. 
I put a chair in front of the bedroom door. You go to the same bar at, at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989. One night you're stopped at a DOI checkpoint. You blow a .10 and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. Wow. That is a hell of an intro. And this is where the thing started last time. Oh my god. That is... That's a messed up intro. Oh my goodness, they really set that up really well this time. I think they did an amazing job setting that up this time. That was... wow. We gotta turn on the power. We gotta grab the radio. Hello, Two Forks Tower. I don't know if anything has changed from here. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. Yeah, so I don't believe... Uh, Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Yeah, I'll let them go do this first little bit of text. For two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I what, sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Uh, you've killed three ex-husbands. Okay, uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow, and you're just out here until the heat dies down, and then you'll kill again. Ooh, very good. Bravo, Henry. Okay, I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. Yeah, we definitely don't want to talk yeah. about that. I don't know anything about you. No, don't. Don't press. You got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. Wow. Yeah, so, uh... Yeah, I felt like you should see that intro. Uh, I didn't know what it was, and I didn't realize it was going to be so long. And I was honestly expecting to have that and then sort of cut into, like, the rest of the episode. But, um... Henry? Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Okay, we'll just take that. So, yeah, I was expecting to just sort of play that and then go, like, into the rest of the episode, but that was a pretty long intro. Um, April 28th, 1989. Tomorrow's the big day. We was going to drive up today, but there's a guy coming by from the university to grab another box of books, and he was a real pain in the ass about doing it before I left. Maybe I get to catch the Nuggets game tonight? Or, it means I get to catch the Nuggets game tonight. Met that Phoenix... Uh, not that Phoenix isn't going to take the series in three straight. There's always next year. Not sure I'll get another chance to write until I'll, I'm settled in. I'm pretty sure the drive up to Lander is going to wipe me. May 1st, 1989. Hiked in last night. Got lost a lot on the way here. And then met my boss, Delilah. Real piece of work, hopefully... Hopefully we don't have to talk too much. That's a that's the wrong two. Um, and we don't have to talk too much. Maybe I'm just grumpy from lack of sleep. Didn't get a wink last night, and I'm pretty sure there was a bear sniffing around my tent. I actually made a good fire last night and flipped through Julia's journal. I still feel feel weird about having it, but Susan thinks it's a good way to what's the word she used? Stay connected with the real jewels. Um. But I was sitting there looking at it, and I don't know if it's a good idea for me to keep doing that. It didn't feel good, and yeah, like I said, I didn't sleep great after that, but it was probably the bear. Alright, it's late afternoon, and I gotta check in with the with the boss. I imagine I won't have a hell of a lot to do. 
So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just sort of gonna... There's a 20-sided die in here? There's a d20 in here? What did I get? You have to stop rolling. It's not gonna stop rolling. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna wrap it up there and then next time, eight the hard way? Next time I should be back where I left off because I don't think anything has changed between here and there. So, now that I've tried to wrap it up for three minutes, my name is Nagark, this is Firewatch, and thank you for watching.